Hi, I'm Adam, thanks for stopping by. And in today's video, I'm going to be looking at this, which is a macro keypad that I've designed as a direct result of a conversation with somebody I know. So this person was explaining to me the difficulties that they experience when they need to use shortcut keys, such as Control C or Control and A. And also they were explaining the difficulties that they have when using a mouse where they have to press and hold the left mouse button and move the mouse at the same time. So pressing a mouse button is okay on its own, moving the mouse is okay on its own, but both together proves a problem for them. So hence this. So what we have on here is we have a left mouse button click, a right mouse button click, a toggle control on and off, which is used in a CAD package in conjunction with the left mouse button. We have a select all a copy, a paste, and a snip shortcut. But you can customize these with anything that you like. Today's video is brought to you by PCBWay.com with their user-friendly online ordering system, fast turnaround times, and excellent customer service. PCBWay.com is the perfect choice for anyone looking to turn their PCB designs into reality. And with their commitment to quality and reliability, you can trust that your PCBs will be manufactured to the highest standards. PCB prototype the easy way with PCBWay.com. So let's take a look at it working before we move on to the design and build process. The buttons can be programmed to do whatever you want. So I've got a left mouse click and a right mouse click. Right, let's close this tab. Notice the LEDs illuminating with each button press. I'll enter some random text on my keyboard to demo the select all, copy and paste. So select all, copy, and then paste, paste, paste. Select all, copy, and paste, paste, paste. And the last button on the top row is configured to open the Windows Snip tool. The next demo was the inspiration for the designing of this macro keypad. The idea behind it was that for someone who struggles to hold the mouse button down and at the same time move the mouse around, now they can just move the mouse around with one hand and press the button on the macro keypad that behaves as the left mouse click with their other hand, so no more slipping off the mouse button mid-move. And that's the snip done. I configured the final button to toggle the control key on and off, so press and release toggles the control key on, and press and release again toggles it off. Let's take a closer look at it. Here you can see that the buttons are illuminated from surface mount LEDs on the middle PCB. This design also takes through hole LEDs if you prefer. So that was the toggle button LED. The left click, for example, only remains illuminated for as long as the button is held down. That's the operation covered, now let's run through the design process. I initially tried out three buttons with no LEDs on a breadboard. When I was happy that I could simulate the mouse clicks and other keyboard button presses, it was time to construct a prototype. The person I made this for had drawn this 3D model and it was suitable for five buttons. I printed this out and soldered it together like this. I secured the microcontroller in place with hot melt glue. The microcontroller I am using is the Pro Micro. I then screwed the box together and stuck on some rubber feet and then added the keycaps. I then gave this to the person to test for a couple of weeks and then I got some feedback. Meanwhile, I added an additional two buttons and started laying out the PCBs which would eventually lead to the finished version. I used KiCad to draw the schematic and lay out the PCB. The schematic is quite simple with only a handful of components. I wanted the final macro keypad to be constructed by stacking three PCBs together. The bottom PCB will contain the Pro Micro, some resistors for the LEDs and a couple of headers for connecting it to the middle PCB. Then this part of the schematic is the middle PCB and will link to the bottom PCB with these pins. I created the symbol for the switch myself as I couldn't find a suitable symbol in the built-in library featuring both a switch and LED. I also created my own footprint for these. Let's take a look by selecting the component and pressing the E key. And then here is my footprint. I took an existing 1U Cherry MX footprint and added two pads here that can be used for either a surface mount LED or a through hole LED. Let's take a look in 3D by pressing the ALT key and 3. If you're going to build one of these and you wish to use surface mount LEDs, just remember to solder the LEDs in place before the switches. Right, let's close these windows. You'll find these schematics on my GitHub page and I've placed the link in the description below. 
Here are my PCB designs. I drew them all in one file, but separated them out into three separate files for manufacture. I've yet to give panelizing boards a go, but I'm sure that that would be a much easier way moving forward for any kind of bulk order. The top PCB is the switch plate assembly and so only has holes for the switches and mounting holes in the corners. The middle PCB contains switches and LEDs and these pin connectors which I've placed on the underside of the board so these pins are actually soldered on the top of the board. And finally the bottom PCB which houses the Pro Micro and the resistors for the LEDs. I also created a custom footprint for the resistors so it's possible to either solder a surface mount resistor in place or, if you prefer, a through hole resistor using these holes. The measurements I took for placing the Pro Micro were initially taken from a micro USB version. I've since found out that the USB C version is slightly longer, so for this reason I plan on creating another custom footprint, but this time for the Pro Micro with two possible mounting positions, one slightly offset from the other. This way the USB C version of the Pro Micro will also sit flush with the edge of the PCB. And finally, on each end of the PCB we've got these headers that the middle board will connect to. Let's take a quick look in 3D by pressing Alt and 3. Notice that there's no silkscreen around these connectors, unlike there is on this board. That's because the board is designed for the pin connectors to be inserted from the rear of the board and soldered on the top. Then on the bottom of this PCB I've added some silkscreen art along with some text. I ordered the PCBs from PCBWay.com and then a few days later they arrived. A few days later. Let's get on to the programming. I wanted to have a go at writing the code myself as where would the fun be in using an off the shelf solution. 
I'll run through this code super fast, and as a reminder, it is available for download on my GitHub page. At the top is the commented out section describing what this code is for, who wrote it, and the date. Next, I've included the keyboard and mouse libraries since that's what I want to use this macro keypad for. Here, I've defined the names for the IO pins. It's important to know that these numbers are not the pin numbers on the Pro Micro board itself, but are, in fact, the Arduino pin numbers. So I'm using these numbers in blue. So when I refer to pin two in the code, I actually mean this blue number two here, not this physical pin number two. So SW1 will equal that blue two. Then I just worked around the device according to the pinouts I just showed you. Here I've done the same for the pins that I want to use to turn the LEDs on and off. So LED1 equals pin nine. And remember that's the blue nine. Then I have a bunch of variables that are used to keep track of the state of the button presses. And when the program first boots up, I've initially set them all to false. I added the serial begin line for debugging purposes. It isn't required for the macro keypad to work, but is really handy for testing out your code. Next, I set up the pins with the switches connected to them as inputs and activated an internal pull-up resistor to minimize external components. So these are all inputs. And then the seven LED pins are set as outputs. And finally, before the main loop begins, I read in the state of switch seven. Remember, I configured switch seven to behave as a toggle switch. So the programming for this switch is slightly different to the other switches. The main program starts here. So anything between this and this last brace is executed continuously in a loop. I've commented out this line now, but I was using this for debugging during my initial coding. This way I could see each time that the loop started. So firstly, I need to deal with the toggle operation of switch seven. So I set the last state to be equal to the current state. Then I read in the current state. Now I know it's last and current state. So later on in the code, I can check to see if they are the same or not. I'll run you through switch one now. Switch one is programmed as a Windows shortcut for select all, which is the control key and A. So first I check the state of SW1 is equal to low, which means that it is pressed. Remember that the input is using an internal pull-up resistor, which will hold it high until the switch is actually pressed. And the variable select all press is equal to false, which we know it is the first time around the loop since it was defined up here. So if SW1 is low and select all press is false, then we jump into here and turn LED1 on by writing high to output LED1. Next, select all press is set to true, meaning that if switch one is still being held down when the loop gets back around to this if statement, it won't come back into here since the condition is no longer being met. This can be commented out if you like. I was using it for debugging in the serial monitor. Then the next three lines execute the select all shortcut. Here I am simulating the keyboard press of the left control key. Note that it is just a press and not yet released. This is followed by writing A. So the right command simulates a press and release of the A button. Then I release the left control key followed by a short 50 millisecond delay. The macro keypad has now completed the control A command and because of the select all press variable, if the key is still being held down by the user, this command will not be executed next time around the loop. Let's assume switch one has now been released. The next time through the loop, the SW1 input will be high. This if statement is true since SW1 is high as it isn't being pressed and select all press equals true as that was set to true when the switch was previously pressed down. So now we'll only enter here if the switch has previously been pressed and released. So having verified that switch one has just been released, we come into here and turn off LED1 by writing low to its output pin. Select all press is set back to false so that if the switch is still not being held when the loop gets back to this if statement, then this section won't be entered. Again, I used this line for debugging, but you don't need this line to make the macro keypad work. And finally, a 50 millisecond delay. So let's see the debugging lines in the monitor. You'll see Windows select all command start. So I know that the program entered the if statement. Also, you can see that everything on this web page has been selected. When I release switch one, the serial monitor is updated with Windows select all command end. 
Brilliant, that worked really well and you can see how adding the serial print line commands is extremely useful when debugging a program. You'll see that the other switches are pretty much the same with the exception of the switch and LED number and the shortcut command that they execute. So a super fast run through switch 2 and then we'll jump onto switch 7. Switch 2 is the Windows copy command and here we have if switch 2 is low, so it's pressed, and copy state is false, come in here and turn on LED 2. Set copy state to true, write to the serial console for debugging and then execute the copy command which is the left control key and C and then release the left control key. If I select some text and then press switch 2, you'll see in the serial console that I'm holding down the switch and we only get Windows copy command start and as soon as I release the switch we then get Windows copy command end. Switch 7 differs slightly as this is operating in toggle mode i.e. press and release to activate the function and then press and release to deactivate it. This if statement is entered if the last state of switch 7 is high so that is not pressed and the current state is low so it is currently being pressed. Since this is a toggle I don't care the current state of the LED I'm just going to set it to not that state i.e. toggle it. Then write that state to the LED output pin. So that handled the on and off state of the LED but then we need to act on this depending on whether the LED is on or off. So here I check if the LED is true i.e. it is on then press the left control key and write a line to the serial console for debugging. Note that there is no key release in this section of the if statement and that's because I'm toggling this input on. Assuming the switch has been released and the next time around the loop if the switch is pressed again the LED is toggled and since it is now false the program will enter this else branch of the if statement which releases the left control key. So let's test that. Pressing switch 7 toggles the LED on and pressed and held the left control key down which I can test with my mouse scroll wheel as it zooms in and out of the web page. Ok, now when I press switch 7 again LED is toggled off and the left control key is released. I recommend either DSA or XDA profile keycaps. This is because they are low profile compared to other types and you can see this in the image. If you want to build your own version of my macro keypad I've uploaded the design to PCBWay's project area so you can order the boards directly from them. I've also uploaded all keycad files to my github page. Links for both are in the description below. It would be really cool to see pictures of your builds just tag me in your social media posts. Subscribe and like for more videos like this. Until next time take care.